Hey friends, Spring Benson here, and I'm stoked to have you join us on Real Estate Real Life. Success in real estate and life is 80% mindset and 20% strategy. This podcast goes deep into the mind of top real estate entrepreneurs, CEOs, and mindset coaches across the country who are downright dominating their space and thriving in their lives and business. Tune in each week to learn how the best in the business are building systems that work for them and creating incredible opportunity and freedom in both their lives and businesses. Hey everyone, it's springtime. Welcome back to the Real Estate Real Life podcast. My guest today is the one and only Chris Waters. Chris Waters is a bad A in every aspect. He has written the book, The Real Estate uh, Millionaire Real Estate Team. Yes, thank you. As well as he has a CEO masterclass, which I actually am taking part of right now. And he's really like, are you like one of the top agents in Austin? Like, where's your team set? Yes, I mean, we're number one in, in Austin. Yeah, so it's pretty cool because, you know, I'm, I'm not affiliated with um, a KW and I have mad respect for Keller Williams. Um, like mad respect. I've read Gary Keller's book like over and over again. <laughs> my, my mom gave me Gary Keller's book when I graduated college in 2006. And so I have a lot of respect for him. So, but what's really cool is like, you know, we built a team, you know, use the team model, not affiliated with KW and KW's backyard. So I don't know. It makes me feel good. But, you know, I, I, I mean, I got to kind of thank Gary, right, for writing the book because it was like the first um, building block to getting, getting me where we are today. Yeah. So let's maybe talk about that journey a little bit because um, I have read your book. I actually took a course, um, how I was introduced to you. I don't know if you know this, um, but I took a course from Frank at Viral Marketing about recruiting actually like a couple years ago and it changed my business and he reached out to me again and said hey i'm i'm actually going to teach you teach a course on um based off of this book is it something that you would be interested in and so i i don't think i ever told you this but i sent my assistant my director of ops at the time because i wanted her to create the um the, brand ambassador program yes the brand ambassador and she didn't execute not one damn thing. And so I let her go. Cause I was like, it was expensive. And it was just one of those things that it was like, I expected her to do that. So lesson learned on my part. Hence now I'm back in your coaching, but maybe hit on like your journey a little bit, like what made you read book, how you've started all that jazz. Yeah. You know, I originally got in real estate cause I love the idea of having no ceiling on my income. And I thought, you know, you, you have freedom and you know, and, and like I was young, like I, I got in real estate when I was full time, 24, 25 years old. And so, you know, it's very, you know, my, my idea of like why I wanted to be in it, like from a very superficial perspective was like buying the fancy cars and all this, you know, stuff. But I mean, the truth is the reason I, you know, I wanted to be successful was I just wanted to, um, I wanted to prove to my family what I could do. Mm -hmm. I grew up, um, I grew up um, with my mom, a single mom. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't very close to my dad's side of the family, but my dad's side of the family were a lot of engineers, some super, super smart people. But, um, you know, like, it was just one of those things, like, I always felt like I had something to prove um, to the people, like, especially on the dad, my dad's side of my uh, family. And, and I always just wanted to make my mom proud because she was a single mom. I mean, that, that was the honest truth, what, what really drove me. On the surface, I was probably thinking cars and, you know, cool stuff like that. But I think really that was like, you know, one of the internal drivers for me. So um, I love real estate because there's no ceiling on your growth. And when I uh, started out as an agent, the market was really bad in 2010. And um, I started following Gary Keller's book and, um, you know, going out there and hammering expires and withdrawns. And I, to be honest, at the beginning, I really sucked at it. Um, but I started figuring it out. Like I started getting really, really good at it. And um, in the summer of uh, 2013, in that first six months of the year, I'd gone on 267 listing appointments. Oh my gosh. And so I, I, I hit like a, a I kind of mentally hit a brick wall. And I said, you know, like, I can't, I, I, I can't keep going like this. Like I cannot see the inside of another, um, <laughs> another person's closet. Like, I just can never do it. If I see someone else's closet, I'm going to shoot myself, you know? 
yeah anyway so my the thing was like i was like i gotta find a way to like you know create leverage and surround myself by other people and i'd like to tell you guys it went great but i went out and i recruited like 20 people and in the first 12 months 18 of those 20 people sold 18 houses Wow. So I, I failed, I failed pretty miserably at um, recruiting and selecting and um, you know, I, but the truth is I started figuring it out. There were like three things I had to figure out. One was like, how do you give really good opportunities to your agents to set them up for success? How do you train those agents to be successful? And third, how do you make sure you're hiring the right people? And like, honestly, I just, I just, I guess I was, you know, I just, to be honest, I, I just failed a lot. Like I failed at each of those three things a lot until I finally started figuring it out. And um, you know, what, what's kind of interesting is a, a lot of the answers to my questions came outside of the real estate industry. Mm -hmm. So in um, 2011, 12, 13, I, I went through like every coaching program out there, went to all the conferences and I won, I, I, I learned a ton and I owe a, a lot of like, you know, the success I had to like learning from all these other great mentors and coaches. Um, but it got to a certain point where I was just on the transaction treadmill. And um, as I started building up like the organizational chart of the business and following um, what Gary Keller talked about, like I found myself like constantly getting pulled back into the business. Like I would hire somebody to run the operation side, hire someone to run marketing, hire someone to run sales. And then like, you know, like I just constantly found myself getting pulled back in. And so I, I found a lot of, um, as I was going along, I, I found a lot of holes in the book Gary Keller wrote. And so, you know, I, in, in um, 2014 and 2015, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was like one of those things where, I, I don't know if you've ever had that feeling where, you know, you've, it's like you found the gold underneath the rainbow. Um, I kind of had something like that happen to me. I was literally, um, I was like, I was, you know, I was like hustling and working super, super hard. And um, in, uh, in 20, um, 2014, I, I got my tax return for 2014. And um, I had um, netted a million bucks in a single year. And, yeah. and I was like, I was like, you know, I don't know, it was one of those things where it was just like this, like, you, you know, I never imagined, you know, ha that ever happening to me. I, um, you know, I, I remember living in like a 500 square foot house with my mom. And um, I, I kind of felt like I had this, you know, moral obligation to like share with other people how to do this. Like, I felt like I wanted to shout off of, off like the rooftop, like how, how to actually pull this off. And so um, I, had, I had like quietly kind of shared with people some of the stuff that I fell ass backwards into doing by accident. And um, I talk about these three big secrets um, in a class I do. But um, uh, in a lot of the masterminds I was in, you know, I, I was quietly sharing what I was doing and these other people I was sharing it with, like they too started having tons of success. And so I was like, okay, well now I feel a little bit better after I've seen other people do this, like share it with the world. And so I, I wrote a book called the million dollar real estate team. And it, it was, it's basically just my journey of, um, of building a team. And I talk about a lot of things that worked really well and what, what didn't work really good. And then, you know, we, we've sold a ton of copies of the book and a lot of people, um, you know, wanted, wanted more information on, you know, how to make that transition from owning a job, which is what most real estate agents and even a lot of these real estate teams, like these people you hear about that have real estate teams and they're selling two to three, four, 500 homes. Like a lot of them still have a job. Like they get, they're still actively involved in their business, like going on listing appointments or running sales team meetings. Like they're, they're still very, very much involved in the business. And so, um, you know, there's, there's a book written by uh, Robert Kiyosaki called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And in that book, he talks about this quadrant. And in that quadrant, you've got um, the E for an employee, S for self-employed, and then um, B at the top right hand corner for business owner, and then I for an investor. And he says, you know, the, the people on the right hand side, the business owners and the investors, they don't trade time for money. And so something that I, I learned outside of the real estate industry was how to make that transition from being in a, in a role where, you know, I was either producing deals, closing deals or training salespeople or running sales teams. Um, I learned how to like start taking the daily um, actions and, and activities that would make me kind of make that transition from being a self-employed agent or self-employed business owner 
that owned a job to actually building a business. And so I, I realized that you know what your organizational model has to look like is much different than what um, Gary Keller spoke about in his book. And so you know I I I, um, I share that in this book, and then um, I I teach a course which you're going through um, yeah. spring, and um, the the course is really about some of the very strategic things you can do to grow your business faster. I talk about something called the brand ambassador program. Um, we talk about the recruiting and selection process of talent a lot. Um, if, if you're if you're trying to build a, a real estate business, you know your success is predicated on the success of your agents. And you know a lot of people that get into real estate are great salespeople and great talkers, but they're they're not um, you know they're they're not the type of people. Well, most of them are are not all the type of people that are going to back up their words with actions. And so the, the vetting process of, of salespeople in the real estate industry has to be quite extensive. And I spent a lot of time studying uh, organizations like um, Teachers for America, um, studied one, uh, the, like special forces in military, like the vetting process they go through to find really amazing people. And we started implementing things very similar to that in our 90 day agent boot camp, which is what we talked about in the CEO masterclass. But um, anyways, you know, these key um, things, you know, are what helps you um, kind of make that transition from owning a job to actually building a business. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. So um, I am going through your CEO masterclass and I have read your book and aha, I also came and shadowed your office last week. And yep. um, an aha that I had when I was there is you're really, really running like a real organization. I've been to a lot of teams offices. I've done, um, I personally, I mean, we'll close 250 transactions this year. The difference is, is, I mean, you're, it's a business, like a full on business. And I think um, I'm in a lot of masterminds as well. I think that one thing that is kind of trendy in the, in the space right now of the quote unquote team is you hire anybody, you give them shitty leads and you hope that they sell uh, 10 to 12 houses a month. Like I'm not month, I'm sorry, 10 to 12 houses a year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so that it's a constant recruiting. And I think at any level you have to have that constant recruiting, but it's a very mediocre business where if you actually like your book and your class really teach you how to run it as a real solid business instead of hiring mediocrity and then hoping you get a few deals from their SOI or that they close some deals that are pipeline that are six to 12 months out. Right. Right. Yep. Um, so tell me like, I, obviously you said you wanted to go from being like, I can't go through another closet. I got to figure this out. Like what was the, what was the one thing you'd suggest? Cause I think that a lot of people are in that space right now. Like a lot of them are in this space. They've read the millionaire real estate. They're doing what I'm doing. I would guarantee you like most of the teams that I come encounter with are doing exactly how we're doing it. You're, you're a rare exception, um, right now. And the pe people that are doing it like you are, um, I know are hitting it really hard. So what would you suggest for somebody like myself? who is selling houses at a high level, but they've got these huge teams that are just a bunch of mediocrity. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think if you're, if you're a top producing agent, you know, in your mind, you start to diminish how amazing it is, like what it is you're actually doing, mm -hmm. right? Like if you were a top producing agent and built a team, like in your mind, you're like, oh, selling 30, 40, 50, 60 houses, you know, as a, as a rising rainmaker is no big deal. And, you know, like, you're like, why can't everybody do this? And so um, I think the thing you need to remember is, is like, for those, of those, for those people out there that have started teams and before they started a team were successful selling 30, 40, 50, however many houses, like that is, a, that's a rarity. And you, and you are a rare find. And for, for you to go out and find other people like you is going to be an incredibly daunting process. So if, if you think about, um, for example, uh, you know, the average real estate agent in um, the United States, I think they sell like five or six homes a year. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, spring, I have no idea what you were doing when you were a solo agent, but I'm sure you were selling a crap ton of houses. Right. So my, my point is, is like, you're probably selling 10, 15, 20 times just by yourself what the average realtor is doing. 
And so, you know, like, how do you go about finding that type of person? And so if you study other organizations that, you know, like if I asked you a question, like, for example, you know, like what does Harvard, MIT, like, you know, the thing about the, um, uh, the Navy SEALs, like, you know, what, like, you know, that the, just the quality of people, right? And you think about um, companies like Apple and Facebook, like, you know, I'm, I, if I asked you what they all had in common, what would be your answer? Like, what's the, what, what do you think they all have in common? Uh career trajectory like the path of where you start and go right very, yeah i mean you're very you're very close so um the, you know most people say it's like the brand but that the you know when they started these companies they weren't the brand like how do you build a brand like that yeah. and and the way you build a brand in a company is by really focusing on um the recruiting and sol and selection process like you know there's that that pareto's principle 80 20 rule like the 20% that yields all your results. Um, it's, it's the, um, uh, the selection process that really, you know, helps you build a real brand like Harvard, MIT. And so the thing that a lot of, um, a lo the thing that a lot of agents, the mistakes they make is one, they discount how great they are and they start thinking they're going to find a lot of people like them, which is not the case. And so if you, if you can use like some of these other organizations, for, and I use Harvard and MIT and Apple, Facebook, like Navy SEALs, I use those as examples because these organizations at the top of their funnel, they're putting in like tens of thousands of, you know, prospective students and employees into the top of their funnel. So they have a massive number of people at the top of the funnel, and then they actually meet people face to face. And then out of those, they decide, okay, who are we actually going to bring on? Right. And like the interview process is different for all of them. But um, the other kicker is so, so not only do you have this, this barrier to entry um, in terms of getting, you know, thousands of people in the top of the funnel and then only selecting a few, but the other thing about every single one of those organizations is actually once you get accepted into, let's say Harvard, for example, um, the reason Harvard is so well known is because the, the students that graduate there from with degrees are, are badasses and they're badasses because they're, you know, their, their actions speak louder than their words. And, you know, they judge Harvard students actions based off their GPA, right? So if you go to, if you go to Harvard, Yale, any of these Ivy League schools, um, and, and you do crappy in your first semester, like you'll literally get pulled out of the college. Like yep. if your GPA falls below a certain level, you get kicked out. The Navy SEALs, they do something similar. Like, you know, you could be in the Marines, right? Like anybody, like, you know, not anybody can be in the Marines. There's a, there's a process, right, to get in the Marines and they only select some. And then to be a Navy SEAL, right, there's like, you know, very, very few people um, become Navy SEALs. And so they take people through this like daunting process over, you know, six months to vet out the people that are going to actually become Navy SEALs. And so I use that same, uh, that same process and methodology when it comes to um, how to go about selecting talent. So we have the barrier to entry to join the company at the interview process, which is we want full-time agents, you know, people that, you know, this is their career. They want to find success and upward trajectory. Um, and then, uh, you know, like the disc profile and all that stuff, like, you know, it's a good data point, but it's not an end all be all. But then we actually bring them onto the team and then we have a 90 day boot camp, and there's like very specific things we're looking um, looking for in that boot camp, just like with Navy SEALs or in Harvard, you know, Apple, Facebook, any of these organizations. And so it's it's through that process we're able to consistently find agents that you know will sell, I mean, a, a crap ton of houses. I mean, you you were in my office, my my average uh, listing agent at our um, home base in Austin is selling between 80 and 120 listings a year. And so Which is like, awesome. yeah. And, 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 you know, granted, you know, they have, you know, transaction coordinators inside sales. So they have a lot of leverage, but also you gotta be a badass to sell that many houses, no matter, no matter how many people surround you. And so a, a lot of the, um, you know, it, I think uh, if you're if people, for people watching this, like everybody knows about the funnel with lead generation, mm -hmm. like start thinking about people kind of like, uh, you know, like lead generation, like fill the top of your funnel with as many talent leads, if you will. And then like, you know, meet as many people as hum humanly possible, green light them, and then put that process in place where you have additional barriers, even after they join the organization to make sure you're keeping the right people on your team. Yeah, that's really smart. I, I, I remember you mentioned in your CEO masterclass that 
people can kind of bullshit their disc profile, um, all of that. So you really hire off of their energy uh, based on how they make you feel in the interview. And then you go through that 90 day. Um, how many people would you say that you bring in for that 90 days to actually make it through? So we are, our, our, um, so what our conversion ratios look like, which everybody can relate to that because of real estate lead gen yes. is two out of 10 people will make it through the 90 day agent bootcamp, two out of 10. Wow. And then to get those 10 people, we have to do 40 interviews. So, I mean, that, the top of the funnel for us is 40 interviews, and then we'll actually get um, 14 letters of intent signed saying they're mm -hmm. going to join. And then 10 people actually show up, and then out of those 10, two people actually make it. And so at the, you give them the full 90 days, and at the end of the 90 days, if they don't already opt out themselves is when you make that decision. Well, if, if you've seen that movie with um, uh, Demi Moore, uh, Demi Moore with uh, the movie's called G.I. Jane. Yeah. And, you know, and like people are going up and ringing the bell, right? Yep. And so to be honest with you, in the first month, um, a lot of people actually deselect themselves. Okay. You know, like in the first month, um, you know, we get them on the phones calling like trash and archive leads. And like, you know, some people are like, man, I had no idea this is what real estate was actually about. I didn't think I'd have to spend this much time on the phone. Um, so <laughs> I, a lot of people deselect in the beginning. And mm -hmm. then um, the other thing we'll recognize, like the only time like we're actually having to uh, cut somebody is like when we know they're not a culture fit. There's, there's a great book um, I'll, I'll recommend to you and your audience. It's called Culture Code. Mm -hmm. And the author of the book Culture Code spent his whole life studying like what makes, you know, uh, high performing teams so successful. And in the book Culture Code, he says that the earliest predictor of success of a team is not any individual's strengths, weaknesses, or skills. It's how the team members feel about one another. And so the key thing we're looking for in the first month it has nothing to do with, um, you know, how good a salesperson they are, or how, how good a talker they are. It's all about like, you know, are, 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 they, the, are they the type of person that's coming in with high energy, high five and people holding the door, giving each other compliments, like those type of things, they seem intangible. And, and I'll be honest, I screwed up at this like so many times. Um, when I took some leadership coaching, what I learned is there's there's what's called the science of leadership. And then there's what's called the art of leadership. And um, in the art of leadership, you pay attention to the way people feel, which is kind of the foundation of culture, mm -hmm. um, especially in, in sales organizations. Most people would agree that your, your success in sales is, you know, 80% um, contingent on your mindset, right? So if you have a, if your job as a sales team leader or a business owner is to create an environment where people want to jump out of bed, and they want to perform at a really high level. And so if you have people in there that are like cancers, right? And like make other people feel crappy, you know, people are going to come in with a negative mindset. So, you know, um, the, the, your job as a team leader is to really like, you know, push people off the bus as quickly as possible in the beginning when you see that they're not a good culture fit. Um, and so that's the first thing we're looking for in the first month. Like, you know, how many calls they make and all that stuff is like, you know, like we, we if someone has the will, and, you know, they're willing to, um, you know, be coachable, we know we can help them, you know, have success. Um, so anyways, there's key things you're looking for through that 90 days. Um, a lot of people deselect and then, you know, a few people we have to let go of. Yeah. You know, another aha that I had that I think uh, a lot of agents aren't looking at right now um, is you mentioned in the master class and it just hit home with me is there's not a lack of leads. There's a lack of quality, like learning how to um, convert them. And I think uh, as a new agent, people are like, oh, where do I get my leads? Or as a team, a lot of teams are looking for the cheapest lead source. And that's the problem of where some of their production is having issues is they're doing the top of the funnel type of lead gen because it's cheap instead of doing the bottom of the funnel lead gen, because it's actually going to convert sooner. Um, yeah. I mean, there's, there's, you know, there's two types of like lead generation strategies. Like if you combine them into two categories, there's um, what, what I call brand equity building type campaigns mm -hmm. um, where, you know, you're building a lot of brand equity in the, in the eyes of the consumer. And with those type of uh, tactics, the consumer 
reaches out to you and their intention is very high and they want to work with you. And then the other strategy is more like direct response, you know, and, and that's like generating leads through Facebook and Google. And so, you know, one of the things, and this is what I screwed up, you know, I told you that story about recruiting 20 people and 18 of them selling 18 houses. Part of the problem was I gave all those agents internet leads. Yep. And when I, when I got started in real estate, I was 24, 25. And like, I was that generation where, you know, like when I was in college, I was on Facebook because like they only gave Facebook to college students. Right. And so like, I was like hardcore into the internet, you know, like I grew up with it. I remember like learning HTML, the right websites and stuff. Like I was a big geek. And so the thing, um, the thing I realized is like, that um, internet leads for the most part have really low conversion rates. And so um, when you're building a real estate team, you know, your job as a team leader is to set your agents up for success. And there's a lot of other oil wells, if you will, to get leads that are going to convert faster and are going to have much higher conversion rates. So, you know, as a team leader, ideally you're going after those, um, the, if, if, so I, I, I kind of, in the book, I talk about there's um, four unique phases to the growth curve. So there's a team um, that's going like between, between zero and 150 closings. That's what I call the early climb. The awkward teenager stage is 150, 300 closings. Explosive growth is north of 300 closings. And, it, and that's in a year. And um, a lot of people in that early climb, they're going zero to 150 deals. A lot of them are buying internet leads. And the, ch the challenge with that is, is like when you're hiring new agents on your team, like your agents, if they're working internet leads, like they're gonna have to wait six to 12 months to close deals or build a consistent pipeline. And most people can't wait that long to like make it, make a living. And so there's a lot of other lead sources out there that will convert much higher and much faster. So my, my general rule of thumb is if you're in the early climb, you need to be going after lead sources that will convert over 10%, meaning if you get 10 leads, one of them will close. Or if you get 100 leads, 10 of them close. And, and these leads will close in less than 90 days. So that's another big kicker. They need to close in less than 90 days because you're in the early climb, like it's imperative you build the foundation of your team and get rock solid people on your team. And you know you could bring on some super talented people, but if you're giving them crappy leads, like they're gonna run out of money and they'll be out of the business before you can actually see how amazing they really are. Um, so, you, you know, I, I'm a big uh, proponent of diversifying your lead sources and going after those lead sources that have a faster conversion cycle and a higher conversion rate. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think that that, I, I mean, I look at it from, again, some of the conversations that I've been in and a lot of people just at that, at that messy early phase, right, are afraid to go and take that um, leap into a higher cost of lead generation, because it generally is, right? That bottom of the funnel usually costs more. It's a lot but, more. But you're going to get the ROI from it. So you no, just the, have to. No, what, the one kicker with that is though, so there are some lead sources that will convert in less than 90 days and they're actually quite cheap. So for example, expireds, withdrawns for sale by owners, um, you can buy uh, probate and divorce um, leads. Yep. Um, I mean, you know, why, why do people sell a house? Death, divorce, financial distress, which you can look up bank, you know, foreclosures and um, the pre-foreclosure list. People sell because of, um, uh, you know, um, their kids are downsizing. That's a little bit harder to track. But um, there's a lot of data sources out there where, you know, you'll find these people that have had this life event happen where they're likely to sell. And then, you know, on the, on the buy side, some of the best converting buyer leads are that are are free are open houses and mm -hmm. sign calls. Yep. Um, so we have found sign calls convert at a rate of twelve percent. So for every eight people we talk, we like for every eight sign call leads, we have one closing. And then for every um, for every eight families that walk into an open house, for every eight families, we'll get one closing out of that. So. Um, you know, there's, there's some little nuances to each of those things, right? Like you got to know what to say on the phone when someone calls on a for sale sign, that's a mistake. A lot of people make, you need some carrots. You need a reason why they should meet with you because you got to give them something they can't find everywhere on the internet. Um, so that's one secret on the for sale signs. And then, you know, same deal with open houses. Like you got to differentiate yourself and have a value, give them something they're not going to find online. I think one thing though that you're hitting on is know your conversion ratios. 
So I, uh, like, if you don't know what you're converting or you don't know your numbers, then you can't make educated decisions on it. So tell us well, what I, you're doing. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, I mean, funny. what's, what's so funny and for people listening to this, most people don't know this, but, um, in, uh, and I don't, I don't know how deep I'll go into this story, but in, you know, I, I, my mission has always been to create a clear trajectory path for, for agents to be successful. And in order to do that as a sales team leader, you got to know your agents, you know, conversion metrics. And so back in um, 2015, um, I, I, you know, we were working out of all these siloed systems and, you know, we had everybody tracking everything on paper and, you know, some people don't put in the, they put in honest numbers, right? And then like, you know, just getting people to submit their numbers is challenging. And so I, I had this idea in 2015 to go and build a business intelligence reporting dashboard. And so I started looking at all these ways of building this really cool dashboard. And um, one of the challenges was, is, you know, uh, I had to still manually input all the numbers in a dashboard. And so I met somebody in Austin, Texas, and he specialized in integration, a guy named Mac or Mike McAnally. And um, I started showing Mac how in the real estate industry, I had all these siloed systems. And I said, hey, could you find a way to make these systems talk to each other? And most importantly, I'd love to find a way to extract all the information out of these systems and push, push it into a really cool reporting dashboard. So I know what the agents are doing and I have full transparency into it. And so this guy named Mac, he's in Austin. Um, he, he started building this product called RealSync, which is kind of the plumbing behind the walls, like to connect all your software. And then lo and behold, um, I guess what, two, three years later, I meet um, Brian and Spring from Sisu. Um, and I've, I find out you guys created a dashboard and Mac created all the plumbing and it was like a match made in heaven. And so I'm a, I'm a, I, you know, I personally use um, Sisu and this is how we're able to have transparency into our agents um, daily activities um, and, and look at their funnel. Cause like, yeah. for example, um, with, with salespeople, you know, it's, it's so funny with salespeople um, you'll get people that say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all this stuff and I'm doing open houses and I'm making calls and all this stuff. And like, I used to just hear it and I thought they were busy and so I, but you know, and I thought their problem was like the scripting around getting in front of somebody. And then, and then we actually hooked up Sisu and I pull up their profile and I noticed like they've logged like six phone calls in the past week. And right? I'm like, well, hot dang. I'm like, well, <laughs> that's like going to the gym and, and you're, uh, you're, you're, you know, maybe doing like two or three reps with a donut in your left hand <laughs> and then you go home, you know, that's, that's not enough effort. Uh, so funny, Chris, I have this same conversation weekly, like, oh, da, da, da. and I look at their numbers. I'm like, okay, let's break this down. So 40 conversations take how long? So what did you do with the other 40 hours of the week? You know, like it's, it makes it very transparent. So. Yeah. Well, I'm a big fan of, um, Sisu. I love what you guys are doing. Thank you. Well, we, you know, the cool thing about it is, is we use real sync as well. And it's nice to see it, that it all connects. Like my boomtown automatically connects into, um, into Sisu as well as my dot loop. So it just makes it a one-stop shop. I think the biggest thing, so really it's Brian that did Sisu, but it was because I was in these conversations with people like yourself and that knew their numbers and um, it was very transparent and I didn't know my numbers and I was tracking in a Google spreadsheet and he's like, there's a better way to do this. So yep. um, it has been really cool. So let, I want to know like if there's one thing that you would advise um, somebody to do to push their business forward, what, what would you say? So I, I think the biggest thing anybody needs to, I hope the, I hope the one thing people take away from this is you don't probably need to learn how to be a better real estate agent. You, you need to learn how to be a better CEO and, and CEOs, like they just think differently. Like they think like, you know, like high level strategy, like what are like the small little things I can change and um, what are the small things I can implement that cause like geometric growth? So, I mean, like, you know, again, these are things I just fell into ass backwards, but like one of the things we did was our brand ambassador program. Mm -hmm. And 
the thing was when I got started in real estate, I would, I would take 10% of my commission check and reinvest it back into my business. Well, 10% only allowed me to buy a certain number of leads and those leads would only be able to allow me to hire a certain number of agents to give those agents opportunities. And so, you know, what I, what I found as a real estate agent is that I, w I became an ambassador for a lot of other local businesses around the area. And, um, you know, I was referring out stuff to inspectors and like landscape guy and roofing jobs and remodel jobs. And um, so anyways, I, I created this thing called the brand ambassador program and it started off super small. It like wasn't anything fancy. Like literally we, we, we actually started doing a monthly mastermind with these local business owners. And the first one, we had breakfast tacos at some taco shack. And it's like all these like really successful local business owners. And I, you know, I, I wasn't very formal, but you know, and I only had five or six people there. Um, but like the ahas that came out of that were amazing. And if, if you've ever read, there's a book uh, Napoleon Hill wrote called Think and Grow Rich. And so Napoleon Hill is kind of the one that coined the term, the mastermind, and so like, it, you know, as a, as a real estate agent, like you're like, man, how can I help somebody that owns a roofing company or, you know, a home remodeling business? And I, I think a lot of real estate agents forget, like most of us have become like sales ninjas and like we can help other business owners learn how to improve the number of clients they're working with. And I'll give you an example, this, um, this roofing company, well, actually most roofing companies or plumbing companies what their sales process looks like is somebody calls in and says, Hey, I want a free estimate. They send a guy over there, they fill out a piece of paper and then they put it on the doorstep and they're like, Hey, give us a call and let me know if you want to, you know, you want us to, you know, do the job, right? Like that's their typical sales process. So when, um, when I started sharing with, um, the, this roofing company, for example, a company called JMR roofing, I said, you know, when we meet with a customer face to face, step one is build rapport and connect with them and gain trust. Step two is educate them um, on the market. And then step three is differentiate. What are we gonna do for them differently than anybody else? And then fourth is ask for the business. Well, like that one little change caused his, you know, his um, conversion rates to skyrocket. You know, his, his business grew over half a million dollars the following year. And That's then awesome. he started growing his, he started growing his, um, his, his sales team and like, you know, has this really massive business. and. The other cool thing about that mastermind was these other local business owners, they started referring employees to us that would buy houses. And then the business owners also started buying houses. And so like, it, you know, it's like, there's so much that can come out of this. Um, and it, and it's, it's kind of like a super high level BNI group for the actual owner of the company versus their employees. Mm -hmm. um, so it's something really cool you can create. It doesn't have to be super fancy. But um, it's something I, I talk about in the CEO masterclass, like, and we get into the, all the little minutia of it. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a shameless plug. Like you guys, if you're thinking that you're kind of in that spot of how do I grow my real estate team or how do I do the brand ambassador? There's somebody who's done it before you at a very high level. And so you need to learn from them. So, um, I would highly encourage you to check out Chris's program, read his book. Um, it's been a huge eye opener for me enough that I was like, Hey, can I come to your office? <laughs> and you guys were kind enough to like get us in. And, um, cause I'm even at a decision-making point of like, okay, something has to shift of how we're doing this. And, um, you've done it. Like you've already, you've, you, there's no reason to reinvent the will. Right. And so, um, take it, like, you've got to get some coaching. You've got to get into his programs, read the books. If you want to take your business at that next level, even if you're just thinking of starting a team, do it the right way. Cause I feel like a lot of people just are like, Oh, I'm going to start a team. I'm busy. I've got these leads. I'm busy. I can go to the next, ne next level. And it's not necessarily a profitable endeavor for a lot of people. So yep. Yep. And, and you know what, this, this idea I had, like, I didn't come up with this. Like I happened, like I got, again, I fell ass backwards into this. I started meeting people that had other local businesses in the area. Like I was prospecting expireds mm -hmm. and I cold called some guy that had a um, RV dealership. And I said, man, how do you spend so much money on billboards and TV and radio? And he's like, well, he said, well, the same way all these other companies do that have like mattress stores and like TV uh, uh, car dealerships. He's like, we all get money. Um, we all get what's called the co-op dollars. And I'm like, co-op dollars. I'm like, what is that? What does that mean? 
He's like, well, we get like, you know, 50, 60, $70,000 a month from all these other vendors that we help support. For example, like the home, like the warranties they sell on cars, like the f financial, um, like the, the loans they sell on cars or RVs. Same with like mattress companies, a little like protector and all these little upsell things they do. Um, like all those third party entities, like put money into this marketing kitty and they all are marketing together. And like that store, for example, is the, is like the, the leading thing that generates the lead for everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I mean, that's where the concept was really born um, and, and how the brand ambassador program was, you know, born and how, where the idea came from. So, but to your point, like don't reinvent the wheel. There's yeah. lots of people that have, have figured this out before us. Yeah. Very cool. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time today. This was a last minute thing for us and I appreciate you. You're always the wealth of knowledge. So if you guys want to, I'll put in the link how to get a hold of Chris and look at his CEO masterclass as well as info in the book. You want to cool. give yourself a little plug of how they can find you as well. Yeah, you guys can um, go to you if you if you're interested in checking out the uh, master class. It's um, brokerage hacks, brokeragehacks.com forward slash um, master class. So brokeragehacks.com forward slash master class, and you can check out my uh, CEO master class three month program for people to go through, and um, yeah, check it out online at that website. Awesome! Thank you so much. Thanks, Bring. Bye. I got to figure out how to stop recording this. Hold up. Oh. Are you there still? If you like today's podcast, go ahead and take a screenshot of the podcast, tag myself at Spring Benson, hashtag the real estate real life podcast, and let me know what you'd hear, like to hear more of, who you'd like to have me interview, as well as if you really, really liked it, go and subscribe. It will alert you every time we have a new episode, as well as go to the iTunes stores and give us a review.